good evening all uh, today uh, we'll have an introduction on the governance and agile way of working uh, the slides that you see or rather the topic would be more from an investment banking perspective and from a disciplined agile practitioner's perspective uh, i'm i'm assuming that most of you are from uh, either uh, agile coach or don't have really a background around agile and considering that i'll go really slow and i'll ensure that everyone understands the topic to and hence i'll make it simple and clear in terms of the topic and how we move ahead uh, in terms of uh, expectation uh, as i said this would be more from uh, I, I would cite some examples from investment banking example uh, and also uh, from a disciplined agile and we'll have we'll uh, use the first 45 minutes in terms of going through this material and last 15 minutes to uh, have your question and answers uh, as part of the discussion and at the end we'll have a poll as well uh, so uh, you can type in your questions uh, in the chat window and we'll go through it at the end of the session Okay, uh, so just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Amey Atle. Uh, I'm currently working with a multinational investment bank and uh, I'm an agile enthusiast. So uh, I like to read articles about uh, agile and project management. Uh, I'm PMP certified in active standing and also a disciplined agile practitioner. Uh, I'm also an active blogger in on various project management sites, uh, which I'm active on. I'm a husband and a father of a nine-year-old kid. Uh, overall, 15 years experience into the PMO space, the project controls and the delivery framework. So delivery framework is what uh, really excites me. And I continue to learn the best practices uh, that are in the space of project management and agile project management and try to implement it at my workplace uh, a brief uh, about pro thoughts uh, so uh, we are all currently on the pro thoughts platform and uh, those who are new to this pro thought pro thought is a premier uh, project management training provider and is closely collaborated with pmi and they have a suit of credentials and PMP certification workshops or an agile workshop that they conduct uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, like uh, quite a experienced organization in terms of learning hours, they have a various uh, suit of credentials certifications that they have to offer in project management in disciplined agile. And uh, uh, and also there are various formats in terms of the course offering, corporate trainings and e-learnings. Uh, these are like uh, the key agile certifications that PMI has to offer, which are into a disciplined agile and agile certification professional, certified professional, which is a old certification from a PMP, but they recently launched a new concept, which is the disciplined agile. We'll touch base on that concept as we move through the slides. So uh, this is the uh, brief agenda uh, of our 45 minutes discussion. So uh, I'll keep it interactive. As I said, 15 minutes are reserved at the end to cover the questions from the participants. Uh, so uh, briefly, there will be introduction and then uh, about the topic, and then we'll also go through the various frameworks that we have in the agile world. Uh, but the key focus would be uh, from, a, from a discipline agile perspective and how we really scale those agile frameworks. And then those who are pretty new to this topic, the agile thing, we'll also uh, go through certain terminologies in the agile world. Uh, how the organization setup is really done in a investment banking that uh, from a practical example, I'll share some uh, best practice examples. Mm, and uh, also like what are the challenges or hindrances that we have in terms of implementing the agile at a scale 
in uh, big organizations. And lastly, uh, how the disciplined agile or DA um, uh, have their govern delivery team set up in, uh, in the disciplined agile environment. And finally, we conclude the session. So um, this is like more like an icebreaker slide that I really want each one of you think, to think of. So uh, everyone knows Kodak uh, company. This organization uh, is majorly into films, uh, the camera films and the cameras. Uh, but it so happened like a very famous quote, the only constant is change and the rate of change is increasing. Uh, this is a famous statement from uh, a book called The Bold. Yeah. Uh, and the author is Peter Diamandis. Diamandis. So he is a future uh, thought leader, wherein uh, he, in his book, uh, has cited what are the future trends or mega trends that we see in the current environment. So 3D printing, for example, artificial intelligence, uh, robotic process automation. These are the key um, technologies that are disrupting the organizations across the world and we have seen this example like we earlier had this uh, filmmaking company kodak and now uh, the the uh, company could not really uh, adopt to the fast changing business environment and they were like disrupted and it all went into the digital space and we saw the digital revolution so quite a worth of uh, disruption that happened in this industry as well. And pandemic was really a good eye opener for most of the organizations, which were still following a traditional methodology. And now they are realizing that project need to be done in a very different way and not, we can, can't continue in the same old way as we used to do in the past. And, uh, agile is uh, really driving that space. Uh, so key terms for those who are new in this uh, business agile setup. Um, so business agile, uh, you see the textbook definition here, but what we really try to achieve or what organizations really try to achieve with business agility is they want to reach their customer fast and uh, disrupt the competitor. Because if you bring in changes to your product very late and then product would, the, the customer would definitely prefer a product that provides you the best facilities, best features, and mobile is a great example here. So uh, we see various variants, various companies in the market, which launch new products, new features in the uh, mobile space. And those are the customer preferred choices and customer do prefer those when it comes to selection of a product. And uh, hence business agility is of uh, utmost importance in this current environment. Uh, and as the topic is also about the agile or the governance around the agile, uh, in the governance, what we really say is governance in, uh, so that there are various school of thoughts that we hear, whether agile and governance can go really hand in hand. Um, and uh, governance, what it really means is it's a oversight function in most of the IT firms, but it's quite prevalent uh, in investment banking industry. And uh, in investment banking, we usually have a transformation office. Uh, transformation office looks after all the key initiatives that are run across the bank and how these new changes or new requirement from customers and from regulators and or other, the other authorities uh, or mega trends that are driving the uh, industry, how, they, uh, how this transformation uh, office looks, how they can really make changes to their product in terms of facilities, features that they offer in that pro banking product and how uh, um, they can be the game changer or the disruptor in the banking industry. Yeah. So governance is nothing but your oversight function, uh, which sits under the transformation office and transformation office is uh, office within the investment banking, which drives the key initiatives or key drivers within the uh, banking space. Uh, although this is a temporary office, uh, so once its objective is served, it is dissolved and, then, and a new body is formed. Uh, in terms of the role of governance in the agile uh, organization, 
Uh, usually, uh, this example is from again uh, investment banking. Uh, usually, governance is uh, looked upon as a second line of defense. So we have the project managers or the development community who uh, work at the ground level, and uh, there is a second line of defense which we which ensures the which which is the governance which ensures that uh, the framework or the best practices are adhered to, and the banking being a highly regulated and compliance related industry it always makes sense that certain policies processes are always othered and we do doesn't really cross the boundaries so that there are no penalties in that space so uh, governance as a department plays a key role in ensuring that the bank is not uh, penalized for something that they uh, should not be doing yeah and also it's like the auditors which keep on checking the banking compliances and policies from time to time uh, so the governance and the best practices templates has to be in place and uh, we have to provide evidences that that has been followed from time to time and lastly i, I would say uh, we as a governance office um, act as a change agents so whenever we say okay bank says we want to adopt agile or implement agile transformation across the bank. So the governance office acts as those change agents and they work with individual uh, teams, departments to uh, get that transformation rolled out. And lastly, the metric reporting, which is for measuring the performance. So this is how uh, the bank investment banking is structured from a governance perspective and various roles performed by the transformation office and the governance team. And the primary focus is to have ensure uh, ensure the transparency across the bank so that uh, everyone is aware what is going on on and how the funding or how the money is really utilized on various initiatives. Uh, so this is like a, a topic which is worth again uh, considering uh, why really the transformation fail across organizations so there is a, a research article from mckinsey which is a consulting global consulting firm wherein they realize that uh, the digital transformations 70 to 80 percent of the digital transformations that happened uh, across the globe failed and uh, what they realized is any framework uh, sits on three critical pillars yeah um, so whenever organization decides to adopt a new technology, new transformation initiative, it sits on three pillars, which are the framework, mindsets, mindset, when I say mindset, it's the mindset of the leadership, the employees engaged and business agility is nothing but delivering something fast to the end customer. So if at all there is slippage in any of these three circles, uh, this is called the three circles of the transformation. So these all the time needs to be aligned and collaborative with each other and if at all uh, a certain circle gets added uh, added um, uh, importance the the other sections are like ignored and it affects and fails the transformation so all these three should be aligned with each other and the uh, the the transformation leader need to always ensure that it's not carried away with any of the framework that is available in the market. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, agile frameworks that now we'll uh, do a deep dive into the available frameworks that we have in the agile space. Uh, so these are various, like there are close to 40 odd uh, frameworks that are available. These are scaled agile framework as well as the normal agile frameworks. And uh, these are used by various organizations at various capabilities um, but i would like to bring our attention your attention to a key topic which is uh, a disciplined agile delivery which is upcoming and it's not really a framework like others other frameworks we have but it's more like a tool or best practices derived from these uh, all available uh, frameworks in the market and if at all like uh, you do a google search uh, checking on which are the uh, best practices or good uh, agile frameworks uh, you will see safe uh, as the leader but uh, 
or and organizations do consider safe implementation but it's not a golden uh, rule that if you adopt a safe you will be successful so it all depends on your industry or on your department or on your organization structure it's like uh, in agile world we call it not not a single uh, one 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 size doesn't fit all the organizations so based on your structure of the organization you could be a startup you could be a big mnc or you could be a in, in, in investment banking space so not necessarily all these frameworks would apply and uh, certain may apply certain may not apply or suit your uh, organization so how best we can utilize the available framework to your advantage so that the transformation initiatives that you run in your organization are successful and your customer is ultimately benefited and you are not disrupted by your competing organization so if you see across the globe organizations are striving not really to make profits yes profit is one of the objective but reaching to the market fast so that they are not disrupted by their competitors and they are not uh, out of business as we saw the kodak example earlier so understanding your customer needs and uh, providing them with the right product with a like with with very limited amount of time is the key to the success for any businesses that we have uh, so this is uh, this on this slide you see a disciplined agile perspective in terms of scaling agile uh, this is from the disciplined agile handbook and uh, i earlier mentioned that disciplined agile is not a framework really it's a toolkit and it's based on various practices best practices that other frameworks like safe scrum and uh, the icp agile and all those organizations use in their setup and based on that uh, discipline agile from pmi decided to have a toolkit wherein the uh, transformation leader or the team implementing the agile concepts have a choice to select the tools that best suits their context it could be the size of the team it could be how the team is geographically distributed and what we uh, popularly know to call this framework is a spider diagram uh, there are seven pillars you see uh, on this diagram uh, which determines how a framework needs to be uh, adopted and what best really suits so uh, to explain this in very uh, simple words if the center point the cent uh, uh, um, as much as you are close to the center for example if your organization is or the team size is say 10 member team and uh, the complexity of your organization is like you are delivering a straightforward product uh, and also a solution in terms of it's a standalone organization very informal uh, organization uh, you are very close to the center and in that scenario you have that flexibility to start simple or adopt a framework uh, that is uh, simple in terms of implementation so for example scrum uh, from the research uh, articles it shows that scrum is the easy to adopt and uh, for organizations which are new don't have any maturity in terms of agile adopt this scrum framework wherein they determine the product backlog sprint backlog they have the retrospective meetings wherein they discuss the lessons learned from that sprint they do the sprint planning as part of that so it's quite a easy framework to adopt but as you move distant from the center the things are no more simple so uh, what you see highlighted in yellow is typical uh, in typically a setup of an investment bank which is operated across uh, multiple locations yeah so geographical distribution in case of the investment bank would be they are uh, dispersed across various locations global locations uh, in terms of domain complexity uh, they have to offer some new banking products or services to their client from time to time because you see mobile application being launched and they keep and these uh, applications are very rapidly updated so that uh, the bank stays relevant in the global environment uh, also in terms of the solution complexity there are multiple platforms uh, that run behind these features and the mobile applications 
yeah so that again uh, banking investment banking in, uh, operates in that multiple uh, environment legacy investments uh, sorry uh, setup and also uh, investment banking as you know there are various authorities like sebi at international level we have basel framework then volcker's rule and all these different different regulators which the banking investment has to adhere to so in that scenario this in industry investment banking is very regulated uh, or very uh, compliance related industry so it's far away from the center so in that scenario it so happens the scrum which is very easy to adopt framework may not really suit then in that scenario the investment bank has to decide what really suits their environment or what their employees can easily adopt so that they stay competitive uh, in the marketplace uh, in terms of uh, the da uh, thing this is a very recent certification that pmi has to offer and from an investment banking i'll say uh, the revolution of agile transformation really began uh, with ing uh, in 2015 wherein the entire organization uh, went or adopted agile transformation yeah so if you see just seven years and the first financial firm across the globe was uh, ing which adopted the uh, framework of agile and they were successful in adopting that framework and later on other banking institutes financial firms realized that yes to stay competitive they have to uh, deliver fast to the customer the time to market should be reduced so that they uh, have shorter feedback loops from the customer they hear to their customers and they deliver products which the customer really demands for uh, then the second uh, example from this financial industry is Frankl, uh, Franklin Templeton, which uh, initially started adopting the Scrum uh, framework. As I said, Scrum being very easy framework to adopt, uh, they started with uh, implementing the Scrum. But later on, uh, looking at their size and uh, the decision making, uh, they realized the Scrum did not really work in that environment. The main challenge most of the investment uh, banking or the financial services firms face today is the organization hierarchy. They have a larger uh, or, um, hierarchy in terms of the reporting level. So in that, the challenge is the decision making is very slow. So uh, whenever an organization decides to say adopt any new technique or transformation in terms of adoption, of that it really takes time from the time it's really agreed to the time they really start working on those uh, lines so very uh, as i said uh, it's a regulatory and compliance driven and also uh, the frank the main challenges which in this case franklin uh, templeton really faced was it was it, it's a two like too big organization in the financial space and also the decision making was uh, really slow so what they really did as part of the discipline agile adoption is uh, they they started with training their employees with this framework and they adopted the entire end to end products from the disciplined agile so they uh, conducted trainings for their employees then they hired agile coaches who were experienced into the uh, disciplined agile delivery framework and then they uh, realized that over a period of time, uh, the, the organization matured on the agile thing and they could uh, really reach to their customer fast. Uh, and uh, it's not the scrum that really helped them and nothing against scrum or any other uh, framework. But I just wanted to put a point that not all the framework uh, may work for your organization you may have to really think uh, based on your organization size what framework or what practices would really work and um, and discipline agile really did that say so they uh, learned about those best practices uh, from various frameworks and they demonstrated it as a toolkit so that you have a choice to select 
uh, best principle that best principle could be from safe it could be from spotify model it could be from test driven development or devops or any other models that we saw earlier so again uh, coming to this case uh, the key success that franklin templeton achieved is they were able to reach to their customers faster with better products better applications and uh, um, through their customer service they realized uh, their satisfaction score for their customers also uh, was exponentially rising so these benefits really helped them to uh, deliver what they were expected to deliver and also at the end uh, as business are run for profits they also did a good business in terms of uh, reaching a bigger customer base so and also the 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 the, the team could make faster decisions uh, while adopting this uh, agile or the uh, disciplined agile uh, transformation approach and there was like because of this there was quite collaboration between the it arm and the business arm so in the earlier days banking was just banking yeah uh, people go to bank and they open account and the bank gives them interest but in today's environment with digital revolution is it's no more a, just a banking so technology here is playing a very big role if i may say that way uh, in terms of the if the technology arm of a banking industry of of investment banking firm is good and they are developing innovative product then they are highly likely to succeed in the marketplace and be again that competitive advantage which uh, the organization really strives for so uh, banking is one aspect but technology and adoption of new technologies uh, is what changing the banking landscape over these last few years and uh, the covid pandemic was really eye opener for Uh, the banking industry as well wherein uh, a digital or sitting at home and operating your bank bank account became the key thing uh okay ours uh, so uh, in our setup what we really uh, did is uh, we adopted a okr approach so what uh, what this okr there are two approaches rather one is goal question metric approach and second is okr approach uh, so goal question metric is a quite straightforward approach that most of the uh, organizations adopt because it is simple to adopt uh, use your uh, your team sets a goal for their uh, for the organization or for their team itself and then based on certain questions they identify how far they reached on their goal yeah and they collect data around the questions and the metric is used to see how successful that gqm gqm approach really worked for them but as the organization matures uh, the next approach or alternative approach uh, to uh, metric production is also a okr which uh, we use in our uh, industry uh, which is nothing but objectives and key results so you start with objectives and then you identify what are those key results that would help you uh, achieve those objectives so uh, to put it simply objectives is what you want to deliver and in uh, and key results are how you are going to deliver it so to put it simply uh, okay uh, in banking industry could mean um, say for example the it arm uh, in this case would mean uh, improve quality of your releases could be a objective of your development team and how you really achieve it which is through key results so you reduce the number of bugs reported for release say from uh, 20 to 5 so this is like the key result has to be a quantifiable number it's not a theoretical thing it has to be a measurable thing so key results really uh, defining the key results really matter the most and say say increasing the team members from 1 to 3 so that you uh, deliver faster and uh, reduce the time on the testing before the release so this is one good example from uh, those who are from the it industry or those who are close to the it uh, development team this is uh, to put it simply this is how uh, the okr should be defined you start with objectives and then you define how you are going to really achieve those objectives and uh, when can you really say that you were successful in delivering that objectives 
yeah and key results are always uh, a time bound thing uh, there has to be some timelines around it q1 q2 q3 or q4 uh, it it can't be uh, without a timeline and you go multiple years but you don't really deliver anything so um, okrs is uh, mostly used in banking industry to see how how the uh, objective of the bank is achieved and how the leadership sees in terms of achieving or nearing the objectives yeah uh, some more examples that i have also uh, used here is uh, there is employee satisfaction surveys that are run across uh, banking setup to understand whether it's a great place to work so employ employees who which are empowered are happy and they provide good feedback and um, that generally takes the score up and then in terms of uh, as we serve the clients uh, so that score can also be used in terms of the customer satisfaction surveys uh, which can give you the metric on this more for less means delivering more to your customer with less charges less uh, thing uh shorter timelines to innovation uh is uh, using the shorter feedback loop what you can really do is you can reduce uh, the time to innovate and uh, take continuous feedback from your customer so that change happens often and it benefits uh, the change community the customer community then better quality applications is also one of the uh, okr like uh, parameters which uh, okr can be defined around and also increase responsiveness so how fast to uh, respond to your customer risk request also matters the most in terms of organization setup uh, usually if you see if you see from the uh, diagram here most of the organizations are set as they have certain projects and uh, the program usually holds those projects so those who are new to the project and program terminologies project is nothing but a temporary endeavor uh, which is undertaken uh, by your organization uh, with, with a definite start date and end date and at the end uh, you intend to deliver a service or product to your uh, end customer so product definitely has list of deliverables which the project would deliver at the end and it would have key milestones that it would deliver uh, and program is a collection of project uh, multiple projects uh, and it uh, uh, with the intention that you deliver uh, like uh, the projects of similar scope are clubbed together and it forms a program and what we do in, in really investment banking setup is we track benefits uh, at the program level and also the milestones so this is the traditional setup so if as a banking industry, uh, investment banking industry, I want to move or adopt the agile approach, how do I really have this? This has to be a staged approach. It's not that overnight I decide uh, as a transformation office, okay, next week onwards we'll go agile. It's not, it has to be a structured and phased approach. Yeah, and this is what uh, is a good approach that we don't scrap the entire framework, but we continue with or rather we start the starting point could be uh, you have your existing framework as is around the projects and programs and then based on that project and programs or the benefits that those programs intend to achieve you define a tribe so again uh, now the tribe concept is uh, uh, again taken from a spotify model uh, which is also a scaled agile model uh, so how they really define is um, in agile you have uh, in the agile environment you have team which works on uh, certain features so that in the spotify model is called a squad and there are multiple squads multiple squads form a single tribe that's how it is structured so a tribe is again a agile terminology wherein uh, you can have your tribe around your product so credit card could be one of your product and you can form a tribe uh, against that or a, 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 a maybe a sub business or sub division could form a tribe say lending business could form a tribe so all the projects or program that are run under the lending would have a same intention same objective 
to achieve and hence they form a part of a tribe yeah uh, and the key roles that we really defined in our organization is uh, something that is called uh, poc lsc uh, so which means uh, you have a product owner you have a chapter lead and you have a agile coach so agile coach does that mentoring uh, and it he from time to time do the hand holding job for the agile team so that uh, they uh, achieve what they are um, required to achieve chapter lead is nothing but he is responsible for the tribe okay he is usually a techno functional person who has a good understanding of business as well as the technology and uh, he plays the role of a uh, chapter lead and he is responsible again for the success uh, for, of of that uh, tribe and product owner is nothing but who uh, really gives or jot downs the requirement uh, and how each of those requirement hold in terms of the weightage of importance to the customer so he he does uh, that requirement thing um, requirement mentioning thing yeah and ultimately all these tribes roll to your objectives and key results there is an alternative approach as well. You can move from top to down, wherein you first define your objectives and key results, and then you move down to tribe, and then you define the project and program. But if the organization is already set up in a project prog program environment, it's always better you move from bottom to up, and uh, so that you don't scrap the entire model, but it's more of uh, you continue to have your existing model existing tools and then you adopt the agile methodology but if it's a startup organization it's always better to start with objectives and key results and then you uh, move to the tribe level in terms of what that tribe would really uh, ach uh, achieve as objective uh, this again uh, uh, how we really work in investment banking is uh, when we adopted the agile it's more of uh, a stable capacity to individual uh, agile units which really means that each tribe will have a set of resources and those set of resources would be working on various tribes or various initiatives that are part of that tribe so the number of resources or number of uh, capacity of that team doesn't really change to deliver and the funding really happens at the tribe level and not at the project and program level which really happens in the traditional environment yeah and um, uh, and uh, the collaboration really happens to uh, through automated dashboards which in most of the cases could be uh, sap business objects or tableau or any other uh, reporting solution that they you that organization may adopt in terms of adopting those metrics uh in terms what you see on the left is um, a traditional uh, waterfall or traditional way the projects this is called the uh, triple constraint in project management wherein you have time cost and scope time and cost are usually variable and scope usually is a dynamic factor yeah uh, sorry uh, 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 time and cost is variable and uh, scope is the fixed thing that you intend to deliver and agile really inverts that triangle it says that your time and cost is fixed but scope may vary and who really defines the scope is your end customer or is your uh, marketplace that determines your uh, scope and any scope uh, it can change uh, over a period of investment so you start with your original scope definition and later on you realize the certain features are not really adding value to the customer because of the changing market conditions so that scope really evolves so all these investments really remain in the execution stage and don't uh, and and the scope keep on changing uh, in terms of best practices uh, uh, that that uh, we found really could benefit those who are starting new on their agile journey is as i said uh, first you start these are not really sequenced steps but these are like uh, approaches which could help you in adopting the um, agile framework or embark your organization on the journey of the agile transformation so uh, you begin with your uh, strategic priorities uh, and then you drill down or identify what are your objectives and key results 
then further on once those objectives and key results are defined at the organization level you break down those priorities to individual tribes which we already saw i'm saying this uh, term tribe tribe because it's derived from spotify model and tribe is nothing but for now you can consider a product line or a business line yeah for uh, ease of understanding or it could be a agile unit and then as a team uh, uh, maybe uh, um, the agile coach here plays a vital role yeah he does the agile maturity assessment where exactly the team starts uh, stands in terms of uh, the agile framework understanding yeah and then uh, he decides uh, based on the score of 0 to 5 where exactly the team stands there is a standard checklist that he follows in terms of these are the questions uh, whether the employee have understanding on that and he gives gets a score at the end of that assessment and he knows in terms of adoption where we stand and where we really want to achieve and that is really the starting point once the maturity assessment is done the coach knows uh, where or the transformation leader knows where the organization stands in terms of agile adoption and then the stage comes which framework best suits to my context yeah again there are two approaches here one you can do a pick a pick and choose from various tools various framework or a aggressive approach could be you roll out agile across one subdivision it could be across information technology or the development team you see the success of it whether that framework really work and then you roll out across the organization so basically this is very aggressive approach to adopt a agile framework in a one business area in it and development team and rolling out so simple thing or if you want don't want to really lose most of your organization money it's always better you uh, do in small uh, picking say start with a um, uh, start with uh, daily uh, stand up meetings and all those uh, small small things that are part of the scrum and then you evolve as a team once your team matures then go to the higher frameworks so that that is how it works in terms of the adoption uh, then next thing also uh, needs importance is what would be the key roles yeah it could be the uh, so agile coach would remain as is your scrum master would remain as is but apart from that there could be other roles as well which needs to be defined in terms of who would do what in that framework or in that setup and lastly you define based on the objective and key results that you defined earlier you set up some reporting mechanism yeah it could be monthly reporting it could be uh, quarterly reporting and you uh, track your metrics to understand how well you as an organization you are progressing to towards the agile transformation journey uh, on the slide we will also see a famous quote or famous uh, conclusion that a uh, uh, um, uh, an agile expert from an industry realized, and this is again from McKinsey's uh, a research paper, wherein uh, uh, the person really commented, organizations should avoid any form formalic uh, implementation of agile and, or copy pasting the framework as is. Yeah, and they should be uh, rather, uh, if you see the um, bottom thing as well, it should be more like you don't rely on a framework wholeheartedly but you pick things from various best practices various framework and see what really meets your environment it's not that just we'll uh, we'll adopt a scrum and we start on that journey and later realize uh, no it's not uh, delivering what we uh, want to deliver or you adopt a best known framework and it's not delivering so that is not how it works it all works on picking and choosing from various framework that best suits your environment yeah copy pasting a framework won't really help if your organization is big in terms of this uh, transformation thing and that's what we also realized as part of the investment banking setup uh are some quick wins again uh, uh which really helped uh, us as an organization so identify so if you observe all these agile frameworks uh have some or the other relation with lean and if at all uh, you have uh, known about this lean principle lean says that reduce waste reduce non-value added activities uh, and most of the agile principle derive some or uh, the other thing from the lean principle so origin is lean 
and they have adopted the lean framework to some extent yeah so first of all uh, a quick win would be reduce the number of applications that are run across your industry it could be a banking setup uh, so that you save on some cost and you don't um, have a development team which maintains those uh, uh, applications running in the background uh, define your client centric metric and kpis kpis are nothing but the key performance indicator so client centric means customer centric because if you want to really disrupt in your space operating space customer has to be focused because he is ultimately paying you and then profit will follow so be a disruptor and don't get really disrupted by your competitors uh, there is something which uh, is really upcoming uh, in the industry uh, also called a mega trend i'll say no code low code application there are certain applications uh, which can you which doesn't really need a developer mind or a developer knowledge and employee or any individual in the bank can uh, or in industry can do it without using any code and uh, it, it's a very straightforward approach what really benefits from this is if you adopt to a or if you rely to no code low code application it relieves some of the capacity for your it team and you don't really have to heavily depend on it to get that development done because most of the uh, in most of the organization it so happens that your it is so burdened with new feature to be rolled out that by the time your requirement goes into their pipeline the customer no more needs in that application so it's always better to have these uh, no code low code applications so that the smaller teams uh, can act as a startup and they can introduce those small features and do some customizations through those applications and um, again big industries have to think like startup industries uh, i uh, there, there is a, there is a famous saying which called uh, in in the startup space which is called disrupt or die and that is happening with most of the big uh, players that are not really uh, adopting the faster delivery framework and they are dying perishing because small startups are really taking away their business and they have definitely a cost advantage because the operation cost is less so think like a startup which would definitely uh, help this big organization to um, uh, retain their customers and still have profits uh, adopt a top down and bottom up approach what i really mean here is uh, when we say we want to uh, adopt agile transformation it's not that uh, the leadership mentions and you start following it it has to be both way yeah uh, because at the bottom if the employees don't value agile, agile delivery he may not adopt it he may not be an early adopter and your transformation effort may fail so instead of the top down approach it has also to be a bottom up where an employee is equally engaged you appoint change agents across department who would ensure that uh, these uh, practices agile best practices are being followed uh, next is uh, becoming a learning organization which uh, means uh, so what i uh, what uh, jp morgan chase which is a biggest investment uh, bank did is they trained their employees on the agile framework they uh, what they uh, really did is they uh, invited key customers on a monthly basis to their organization to understand what those key customer need and engineers were also invited to that discussion so the feedback from customer was quick and the turnout time or the turnaround time in terms of getting those features into the product or the application was also quick so learning organization which is is nothing but uh, keep uh, like be a good listener when it comes to understanding your customer and have those short feedback loops uh, wherein you gather feedback from your customers and uh, it helps you deliver uh, a good product that the customer really values so this is really a good practice which which really helped jp morgan uh, capture and retain their customer base uh, and this is uh, like uh, really uh, captured by boston consulting group in one of their white paper that how really banking is transforming and how they are adopting a smaller feedback loop so that 
they uh, adopt the agile framework and they reach faster to their customers uh lastly focus on innovation and change there is something called three horizon framework uh, which again uh, a big player in the investment banking adopted 70 20 and 10. so what these numbers really means is save for uh, assign 70 percent of your resources on your core business areas and let them uh, evolve in that space assign 20 percent of your employees into the emerging business areas wherein they would innovate something and 10% of your employees to those uh, new ideas or innovative ideas so that you don't lose on your core areas. And at the same time, you ensure with that 10% resources that you are continuously evolving. And this, this framework is quite, quite um, a best practice in startups. Yeah, even the drug industries or the medical pharma industries is adopting this approach, wherein 70, 20, 10, this is like three uh, time frame horizon model, uh, which is quite common in uh, startups as well. So this helps to innovate and at the same time stay relevant and continue with your business operations. Uh, again, uh, as I said earlier, there are certain bottlenecks, there are certain challenges when it comes to implementing Agile in banking space. So this industry being very highly regulated, compliance driven, uh, uh, there are challenges when it comes to adopting Agile because uh, there is a famous saying, uh, regu regulate, regulation and compliance see black and white. Whereas, whereas there are multiple uh, gray areas in the agile space. So uh, regulation and compliance uh, being that black and white space, they uh, live in black and white space. They want to see everything on paper and all that. So in terms of agile, we say no documentation or little documentation. Uh, and uh, this really contradicts with uh, what we have in the agile thing. So uh, in the banking space, sorry. Mm, so uh, th this is a key limitation, I'll say, uh, when it comes to adopting uh, or implementing agile in the banking space. Organization hierarchy, like flat organizations, which make quicker decisions are quicker to adopt the agile. Uh, uh, then if, if the industry is not really focused on transformation or, or sorry, the, on the technology bit, then it doesn't really add value to have that agile uh, thing implemented because if you are technology arm uh, you are technology arm, uh, arm will keep on developing some new product new services from time to time so uh, if, if there is no technology then uh, agile won't really benefit to that level and uh, again no single framework fits all so it's always a pick and choose approach uh, that benefits uh, lastly, uh, this is uh, the last slide on the topic uh, in terms of the uh, um, or the key, key slide on the topic govern del delivery team. This is the framework again taken from the disciplined agile handbook, wherein uh, what you see on the left govern team is nothing but a process goal, which uh, disciplined agile has set and uh, the the six boxes against it are nothing but how you really achieve that govern delivery team goal yeah and the rightmost thing is nothing but the decision points okay wherever you see a arrow flowing from bottom to top uh, it's an ordered list so you start with the bottom and as you evolve as an organization as a team you move to the up and uh, what you really see in the bold is uh, the preferred options that that can be a starting point in terms of uh, acceptance or adopting to it so each of these boxes has a like a, um, a set of uh, tools i'll say or practices that most of the teams adopt in terms of how they really set up their team how they really communicate from leadership to the bottom of the team uh, how they manage themselves and um, how they really deliver uh, in terms of metrics, for example, uh, everyone would be able to uh, relate on the metric thing. So provide transparency. The transparency could be through reporting. So you first, uh, if you start from the bottom, you first establish your con uh, consistent metric 
and then uh, if you go to the top dashboard is the last thing which is automated dashboard which is no manual intervention and you get it from certain automated tool which could be tableau or it could be sap business object or any other for that matter reporting tool which gives the transparency to the entire organization leadership and the team which is uh, working on that so this is the framework which uh, defined and if you see these are the pointers these this is a toolkit consider it it as a toolkit it's like you progress from bottom to top uh, uh, in your adoption but uh, there is no mention or it's not a prescriptive approach that you have to do this other team and a team has that flexibility uh, based on their comfort they can choose and pick whatever best suits them uh, lastly in terms of uh, banking uh, industry what is really disrupting here is uh, the new bank concept yeah so what this new bank is uh, if you ask me this is very personal uh, this is like new banking is really disrupting this banking industry space wherein uh, the concept is you will not uh, new banking concept is such that you will not have a physical presence of a bank and all you will do is uh, through your uh, digital device which could be a tablet which could be computer or a mobile so as we have offices physical offices that concept would soon go away with this new bank concept there is like uh, multiple theories around it multiple uh, studies going around this but this could be a game changer we never know in the banking space and lastly uh, agile transformation is a journey it's not that you uh, uh, decide to say uh, we'll go agile in a year's time and you become agile organization it's a iterative thing yeah and again uh, governance can't be really ignored as we saw in earlier there will be reporting there will be metric there will be uh, transparency that is required so governance would still be there to be uh, accountable for those regulators and compliance which come and question uh, your processes your framework so um, lastly i would like to say that uh, agility and governance may appear to be opposite faces of the same coin but they still coexist in investment banking setup and um, uh, this is again a personal opinion adopting a flexible governance like disciplined agile could uh, help you achieve the enterprise objectives so uh, this is more about it um, yeah maybe uh, i now open the floor to question and answers uh, but i'll first go through the chat to see the pre-submitted questions Uh, I don't see any questions. Uh, Jatin, uh, like I don't see any questions in the chat window, but uh, from a content perspective, uh, we have covered what we were expected to cover. Uh, and I believe um, the expectation that was set at the beginning of the session uh, is more or less satisfied but uh, uh, maybe i uh, will open the poll as well to gather feedback from the participants on uh, how the session really went and how was the real content and the flow of that and um, yeah and lastly the claim code as well Hello. Okay, there is a question from uh, Deepankar uh, about flipping the triple constraint in Agile framework. Isn't 
it a major risk on cost and timeline if these remain fixed while scope changes in a project that aim at profitability um okay so again uh, how it as i said uh, when we say the organization go going agile yeah uh, and we say the scope is the same throughout and if we go by a traditional approach wherein we say we want to implement a feature uh, one year down the line but considering the dynamism or the changes that are happening if we say we'll have a big bang approach or traditional approach to roll out that feature one year down the line it may not stay relevant one year down the line yeah so what really apple did is they are releasing quite often the the releases apple uh, iphone 12 iphone 13 they are releasing mark uh, uh, the products or the product development is happening so often that they are releasing product into the industry into the market so often that cus customer still feels that the the product that he is buying is relevant and hence like that triangle in agile space gets inverted reason being the scope has to be iterative if you stick on your scope uh, then it it will so happen that the product that we are delivering may not be relevant to that customer if in that dynamic situation hence inverting that triangle in agile is really a need of the r but it's not necessary all the investment should be all the projects that are run should be uh, should go agile yeah it could be a operations thing which is like a product which may stay relevant in today's world tomorrow's world so in that scenario you can still stay uh, adopt the same old methodology or if your customer is not demanding and you are monopolistic organization in terms of preparing that product you can still continue with that uh, traditional approach but uh, agile as i said uh, the yes there is definitely a cost involved in terms of when you change the scope but ultimately that cost is uh, getting um, backfilled from the customer who is uh, buying your product and you are still relevant or else it will be like a kodak story uh, you may be irrelevant and uh, you uh, are bankrupt as an organization so agile definitely makes sense if that uh, organization is quite dynamic yeah or the product is that dynamic in that space considering the uh, digital revolution mm. uh, Deepak, uh, i hope that uh, answers next is uh, how agile practices can be introduced in construction projects uh, okay uh, frankly uh, in terms of construction projects um uh, in, uh, in the the i'm not quite uh, expert in that but uh, there are uh, definitely some upcoming changes that are happening in every industry and uh, having those uh, short iteration cycles or a short um, uh, cycles uh, in your features that you introduce in your to your customers uh, that would definitely help the construction industry so in, in the earlier it was like uh, we will provide with these 10 uh, amenities to your customer but now uh, with this construction practices or construction industry evolving uh, the the experts or leaders in construction industry how to have those short iteration cycles wherein they get feedback from customer what that customer really wants or else they'll the construction industry will also be irrelevant and they may have an inventory of flats which are unsold so it's some or the other way relevant in all the industries so when we say agile it means shorter iteration cycles yeah having quick feedback from your customer and providing it immediately to your customer that is what matters and hence construction industry is no exception i'll say maybe okay again dipankar dakta so it is okay to assume that this is a best fit in a product driven organization rather than in services based organization where scope creep are required to be tracked through change orders 
so in pro yes uh, agile is more uh, rightly said the pankar agile is more relevant uh, based on my again this is personal um, feedback on this uh, agile is more relevant in uh, product based industry but uh, product driven driven industry but at the same time uh, again services as a industry uh, you have to offer some innovative services to your customer as well so it may not be that relevant in service based industries but yes uh, innovation there is always a scope of innovation and change in service based industries as well so again uh, there is no exception or it's not that agile will work here or agile won't work here wherever you see technology uh, wherever you see product development uh, agile will play a play a critical role there but yes uh, it's not very agnostic agile is not agnostic to any industry i hope that answers yeah manish uh, rightly said uh, uh, these days even service based industries have that statement of work and they get it signed and that evolves over a period of time so uh, definitely um, valid valid point here from a serviced organization uh, there is a again question uh, from ajay uh don't you think that no code no code application will limit the data and information which uh, management may be interested in if they need to do something which is yes definitely the this is definitely a risk in terms of the no code low code development there has to be a proper governance or framework that needs to be set up around that uh and uh, without that if we don't have standardization someone may develop the product someday and uh, it the other and that person leaves the organization and the others may not really figure out and it, that resource or that um developer knowledge would go away so definitely this needs to be a, a structured approach in terms of adopting these low code no code tools but definitely there are pros and cons in terms of that because uh, if you have that no code low code thing into place uh, you free up some space for the it team to uh, look into something that is more interesting more innovative so uh, definitely uh, both has its pros and cons but um, makes sense to have this setup with a proper governance with, with a proper structured approach yeah Uh, give me a moment. Uh, so it's in the chat window, the PDU code, wherein you can, those who are uh, PMP or intend to take the PMP or project uh, the PMI courses can claim their PDU on the PMI website. And uh, yeah, that's it. And we conclude the session. Thanks again. Good day. Bye.